In this Blender video, I'll be demonstrating how to use Blender version 2.8 to render an animation. And I'll be discussing the difference between rendering as a single movie file versus rendering each frame as an individual image. Then I'll demonstrate how to convert an animation that was rendered as individual images into a single movie file. For this video, I'll be using Blender version 2.8 beta. Version 2.8 is a major update to Blender, so if you're using an earlier version, then some of the things that I'll be showing will be different. This is an animation project that is ready to be rendered. When you're done with your project and you're ready to render the animation, switch to the render panel. Here's where you can select a render engine. Typically, you will want to select a render engine before setting up the lighting in your project. But if you switch render engines after the lighting is set up, then you may need to go back and make some lighting changes. I'll be using the Cycles Render Engine. The sampling section is where you set the number of render samples. The larger this value is, the better the final animation will look, but the longer it will take to render. For this project, I'm going to set it to 50. When you're rendering an image or an animation, it can take a lot of your computer's processing power. This can make your computer feel sluggish if you're trying to do other things while you're rendering. Fortunately, Blender has a setting that can help. Down in the Performance section, there is a Threads Mode setting. By default, it's set to detect the number of CPU threads that you have and to use all of the threads for rendering. The CPU that I'm using has four cores. Each core has two threads, so my total thread count is eight. Since it's set to use all eight threads, when I try to use my computer for other things while Blender is rendering, the computer feels sluggish. To help with this, Threads Mode can be changed to Fixed. Now I can manually select how many threads the Blender will use. So if I'm going to use my computer for other things while Blender is rendering, then I'll typically set the number of threads to 6. The downside to doing this is that now the render will take longer. If, however, I'm not going to use the computer while Blender is rendering, then I'll set the Threads mode to Auto Detect and allow all of the threads to be used. Now switch to the Output panel. This is where you can set the resolution that your animation will be rendered at. This value lets you select a percentage of the resolution shown here. I'm going to keep these default values. These are the start and end frames for the animation. These are the same values that are shown down here. You can also change the frame rate here. Next, we're going to set the directory where the rendered animation will be saved. We do this in the output section. Click this button to navigate to the directory that you want to use. Then clear any file names that might be here. Now if you click this button, it will create a new directory. I'm going to click it and create a directory named Render. Then I'll select the new directory and click Accept. You can see the directory name here. This is the File Format drop-down menu. Here you can choose a movie format or an image format. If you choose a movie format, then your animation will be rendered as a single movie file. If you choose an image format, then each frame will be rendered as an individual image. In our case, the animation has 150 frames, so we would end up with 150 images. Rendering as individual images has some advantages. One big advantage is that you can stop the rendering process before it's done and then restart it again from where you left off. I'll be demonstrating this a little later. Also, if Blender or your computer crashes during the rendering process, then you can restart it where you left off. Then, after rendering the individual images, you can use Blender's video sequencer to convert the images into a single movie file, and this conversion is quick. So if you want to convert the images into more than one movie file format, then this is a good way to do it. Also, by rendering frames as individual images, you could do some post-processing on the images before converting them into a single movie file. A disadvantage with rendering as individual images is that it takes a little extra work to convert it to a single movie file. So if I'm rendering an animation that doesn't take too much time to render, then I'll typically render it as a single movie file. However, if I expect it to take longer than about an hour to render, then I'll consider rendering it as individual images. I'll be demonstrating both methods, and I'll start with the single movie file method. The available movie file formats are listed here on the right. 
If you select the FFmpeg video format, then an encoding section will be available where you can select more options. Here you can select a container for your video and a video codec. If your project also has audio, which this project does not, then an audio codec can be selected here. So what's a container and a codec? Let me start with a codec. Your animation is made up of a bunch of images. A codec encodes and also typically compresses these images into a format that can be stored or transmitted to another computer. If our project has audio, then an audio codec would be used to encode and compress it. So what is a container? A container contains your video and audio if you have it. Container files have file extensions that you may recognize, like AVI, MP4, or MKV. This is the file that you play with your video player. After you've selected the container and codec, you can render the animation. To do this, open the Render menu and select Render Animation. When the animation is done rendering, the movie file will be available in the output directory that you selected. Now let's look at rendering each frame as an individual image. To do this, we'll be selecting one of the image file formats. I'm going to use PNG. Now from the Render menu, I'll select Render Animation. When you render an animation, Blender opens a new window where you can see the progress of the render. To stop the render before it's finished, you can just close this new window. I'll let this render for a while, and then I'll stop the rendering process before all of the frames have been rendered. Then I'll show you how to start it again from where we left off. So I'll pause the video until we reach about frame 70. Rendering has reached frame 70, so I'm going to stop the rendering process by closing this window. To restart the rendering process from where we left off, I'll come over to the output section and remove the check mark that's next to overwrite. Now when we restart the rendering process, Blender won't write over the files that we've already rendered. Instead, Blender will start rendering from where we left off. So now I'll restart the rendering process again from the Render menu by selecting Render Animation. You can see here that we're now rendering frame 70, which is where we left off. I'll pause the video again until it's done rendering. Rendering is finished and this is the final frame that was rendered. To play the animation, switch to the main Blender window, and from the Render menu select View Animation. All of the frames in the animation were rendered as individual images. I'll use Windows File Explorer to look at the images that were saved. Each of these images represents one frame in the animation. Here is frame 75. Now we're going to use Blender's Video Sequencer to convert the images into a single movie file. So click this menu and select Video Sequencer. Now we'll add the individual images. So press Shift A and select Image Sequence. Then navigate to the directory where you save the animation files. Now press A to select all and then click Add Image Strip. This purple scene strip represents the images. If you have a sound file that you want to add, then press Shift A and select Sound. For this project, I don't have any sounds to add. Next, if the Properties panel is not open, then from the View menu select Properties. Then click the Strip tab. Up here we can set the start frame, so set this value to 1. The length of the animation is 150 frames, so verify that the length value is correct. Now we'll set the file format. So go to the Output section, click here, and select a movie format. And just like I showed earlier, if you select the FFmpeg video format, then an encoding section will be available where you can select more options. Here you can select a container for your video and a codec. If you have sound, then you can select an audio codec here. I'm going to keep the default settings. Now open the Post Processing section. Make sure that there is a check mark next to Sequencer. We're going to be rendering the animation again. When we do this, if we have a scene strip, which we do, and there is a check mark next to Sequencer, then when we render the animation, Blender will convert this scene strip into the file format that we specified.
So I'll start rendering from the Render menu by selecting Render Animation. The rendering will now be quick because Blender is converting the image files into a single movie file. I'll pause the video until this is done. This took less than a minute to convert. Now I'll use Windows File Explorer and go to the directory where I saved the image files. Here is the movie file that we just created. Now assuming that you have a video player that will play the movie format that you specified, you can play the movie. I've set up this player to repeat the video in a loop so that it will keep playing. So now, let's say that after viewing the finished animation, I decide that I want to make some changes to the project and then render it again. And I don't mean the quick render where I'm converting image files into a single movie file, I mean the full render that takes a long time. I would start by removing the check mark that's next to Sequencer so that Blender won't use the scene strip that I loaded into the video sequencer. Then I would change the file format back to an individual file format and make sure that there is a check mark next to Overwrite. And now I can render the animation again. Well, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.